Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we do what? You've seen by the title of the video, we do some remaining examples. So while I was going through the book, uh, just you know, uh, revising the things up, so I saw that some examples were left. In chapter number three, I believe. Yes, these are chapter number three examples. If I have any of them in chapter number four, so I will do them also. So uh, basically, this is just a revision sort of a video. If you want to skip it, you can. Uh, well, but don't skip it. Don't skip this one. Okay. In this one, I do the example of three power plants. So you can skip the next one if you want. Fine. So these are just simpler book examples that were remaining. So let's say I do the important one first is 3.22. 3.22. Where is it? Okay. Here is it. So I will just give the heading of example 3.22. So what does it state? The annual load duration curve of a typical heavy load being served by a steam station, a runoff river and reservoir hydroelectric station is as shown. So you have what? You have a steam station. You have a steam station. You have a runoff river station. And you have a you have a mass storage, which means you have a reservoir, hydroelectric station as well. So these are the three stations that are you know uh, 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 serving a load center. The ratio of the number of units supplied by these units are as follows: steam, runoff, reservoir. The ratio of units are seven, ratio four, ratio one. These are what? These are the ratios of units supplied by each. Fine? Yes. And the, the load duration curve is also shown. Uh, so I will just show you the load duration curve as well first. So if this is my time axis and this is my power axis, uh, they have shown it in megawatts. Yes, yes. And this is a yearly load curve. So from 320 to 160 320 is the maximum demand 160 is the minimum demand and this is the yearly load curve so 8760 are the number of hours this power is in megawatts range fine now the runoff river station is capable of generating power continuously and works as a base load station. So the runoff river is your base load station. So let me divide this thing. Let me just divide this thing. Or I will just, 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 you know, make a little change to it so that I can divide it into three pieces. So I will just make it a little this, like this. Well, still no particular difference, but anyways. So they say that the runoff river plant that you are using is your base load station. So let's say I have just shown the base load with this thing. This black color shows my runoff river plant. Runoff river plant, which is serving my base load. Then what do you have? Then they say that the and can use the reservoir station works as a peak load station. The reservoir station is working as the peak load station. So let's say this is something my peak load. So, so for instance, this is my reservoir hydroelectric station. So in between the intermediate load is being served by the steam power station. Determine the maximum demand of each station and the load factor of each station. So the maximum demand of each station and the load factor FLD of each station. These are the things that are unknown. So the book has, uh, for instance, given these points some names. So let's say what first we have it. This one is O. I go according to the book. This one is A. Then you have this one is B. Then this one is C. Then this one is D. 320 is D. Then E is this one. F is this one. And G is this one. So just remember these names for now. Just name it. Label, is as, label it as such. So what do you have next? ODCA is the annual load duration curve. 
O D C A is the annual load duration curve, which means the total number of units we can calculate from this one. All right. So the energy supplied by the reservoir plant is represented by D F G. D F G. The reservoir plant is represented by the triangle DFG, right? Yes. Similarly, the steam station by FGCBE, FGCBE, yes. The steam station by FGCBE and then the, the run of river station is represented by OABE, OABE. Is that fine? It is. Now what do you have? This C is at 160, okay? This C is at 160, so I will just mention it with the red color so that this is, is fine then. Fine? Okay. The maximum load is, of course, 320. Maximum load is what is 320 and the minimum load is what the minimum load is 160 megawatts fine yes now the units generated per annum are this total area the total units total units per annum are what are this total area which is e so this total area you can divide into these two parts have a look one is this rectangle at 160 and the other is at this triangle so have a look for the rectangle what do you have 160 is the height plus uh, no not plus multiply multiply 160 is the height and 8760 is the width so have a look 8760 Plus, this was for what? Have a look. 0 to 160 and then till this point C, it's 8760. Similarly, then have a look. You have 1 over 2 for the triangle. The perpendicular is 320 minus 160 is 160 again. And multiplied with, again, the base is the same, which is 8760. Fine. Yes. So, do the multiplication. The total number of units come out to be, and these are in megawatts. These are in megawatts, so you can just, uh, we need the uh, energy units in kilowatt hours range. So, I will multiply this with a 10 to the power 3. So, this means the total energy units that I am requiring or this is generating per year is what? 2102.4. 2102.4 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt hours are the total energy units supplied by the whole three units now what do you have the ratios are given the ratios are given so have a look the steam power plant which generate how many units the steam power so i will name it as es so they will generate units from the total that are what 2102.4 into 10 to the power 6 and you will have to multiply it with what it is delivering this ratio 7 out of how much out of the total ratio 7 plus 4 plus 1 is is 12 the i is uh, 12 yes so 7 by 12 of the total is being supplied by the steam unit and this comes out to be equal to be what uh, 1 2 2 6.4 1 2 2 6 point 4 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt hours okay now now you have the run of river so the run of river let's say i name it as er so this is the total number of units and the ratio that it is supplying is 4 out of total ratio 12 and this comes out to be what this comes out to be 700.8 this comes out to be 700.8 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt hours now similarly for the for the reservoir hydro what do you have i will name it as eh so this is the total number of units and you have to multiply it with 1 over 12 to get this its share so this is what 175.2 into 10 to the power 6 fine yes okay now what do you have? These are the number of units. The maximum demand. So
सो पावर इज एनर्जी बाई टाइम एनर्जी इज पावर इन टू टाइम सो पावर इज एनर्जी बाई टाइम पावर इज द एनर्जी बाई टाइम सो हैव अ लुक द स्टीम पावर स्टेशन वट सप्लाई मेक्स यून डिमांड ऑफ एनर्जी वन टू टू सिक्स पॉइंट फोर अपॉन अपॉन वट अपॉन दिस इज द इयरली सो एट सेवन सिक्स जीरो सो दिस गिव यू द मेक्स यून डिमांड ऑफ द स्टीम स्टेशन विच इज वट नो दिस इज फॉर द रन ऑफ रिवर प्लांट वेल सो वी गो फॉर द बेस लोड वी गो फॉर द बेस लोड फर्स्ट दिस इज फॉर वट लेट से आई डू फर्स्ट फॉर द फॉर द रन ऑफ रिवर सो फॉर द रन ऑफ रिवर आई हैव वॉट सेवन हंड्रेड पॉइंट एट इन टू टेन टू द पावर सिक्स सो दिस गिवस मी वट दिस गिवस मी एटी थाउजेंड किलो वाट्स और दिस वुड बी एन एटी मेगा वाट्स दिस इज द मैक्सिमम डिमांड ऑन वट ऑन द रन ऑफ रिवर स्टेशन ओके now what do you have unit generated by the reservoir plant so by the reservoir plant let's say this is working for how many hours is x and let's say the installed capacity or the maximum demand over here is y so what do you have is that the energy unit supplied by the by the what by the storage that is hydro i would name it as half of x into y isn't it like this it is and also from the similarities of the triangle what can i do is y by also from similarities of triangle i have y upon 160 and this would be equal to x upon 8760 isn't it like this it is so what do you have is you can put the value of x over here this implies that x would be 8760 times y upon 160 so you can put this value of x over here put this value of x over here so this comes out to be the energy of the hydro comes out to be what this comes out to be y squared upon 32 multiplied with what multiply 876 triple zero 876 triple zero but we know that the energy of the hydro is what it's this one so i will equate it to this one which is 175.2 into 10 to the power 6 from here you can find out the value of y which would be what which would be the maximum demand on the reservoir station which would be the maximum demand on the reservoir station and this comes out to be 80 megawatts fine yes similarly the maximum demand on the on the other station that is the steam the maximum demand on the steam station so i would write over here is steam station so we do not need to go for the calculations the total demand is 320 and then you subtract the maximum demand of the run off river is 80 and also of the hydroelectric so 320 minus 160 equals 160 megawatts fine yes now what do you have so we are done with the maximum demands now the load factor so the load factor is fld is e divided by uh, maximum demand into time load factor fld is e divided by maximum demand into time so can you not do the calculations by yourself so have a look the the base load station is working for the entire period of time and delivering the full load so the load factor would be 1 you can do it by yourself let's say i say fld of what of the run of river plant r so e is what e of the run of is this one 710 to the power 6 700 into 10 to the power 6 divided by maximum demand is 80 multiplied by 8760 do this this would come equal to 1 fine yes similarly then you have what you have for the hydro for instance so you have the load factor for the hydro fld of hydro is what the energy units are 175.2 into 10 to the power 6 divided by the maximum demand of hydro is what where is it maximum demand of hydro the maximum demand of hydro this is i believe for hydro yes this one is for hydro 
this one is for hydro it's 80 megawatts right so 80 megawatts so 80 again multiplied with 8760 and the load factor for the hydro plant uh, comes out to be what reservoir hydro this comes out to be 25 percent this comes out to be 25 percent and similarly the load factor for the steam station would be what would be 1 2 2 6 0.4 into 10 to the power 6 divided by 160 into 8760 and this comes out to be 87.5% 87.5% is that fine it is so this was just a simple example I believe I just made it a little boring I took a lot of time but anyways so let's say the next example 3.13 let's say let's say 3.13 another example what does this states a daily load curve which exhibited a 15 minutes peak of 3000 kilowatts so peak is what peak is 3000 kilowatts and for 15 minutes is also mentioned anyways we don't have anything to do with this but is drawn on a scale of one centimeter is two hours so scale the scale is what that one centimeter is two hours on the horizontal axis and one centimeter is two thousand one thousand kilowatt on the horizontal on the vertical axis this on the horizontal that on the vertical the total area under the load curve is found to be 12 centimeters squared total area is 12 centimeters squared calculate the load factor based on the 15 minutes peak load factor is unknown so we have the definition of load factor is e divided by maximum demand into t e is what it's the area under the curve the area under the curve gives you what this gives you the energy units consumed and this is 12 centimeters squared so have a look one centimeter squared is how much 1 centimeter squared is 2 hours 1000 kilowatts so this is 2000 kilowatt hours which means that 12 centimeters squared would be what it would be 12 multiplied 2 so this would be 24000 2400 24000 24000 kilowatt hours 24000 kilowatt hours right yes so what do you have this is now my total area e right yes i have to do i have to do what i have to draw the load factor so the load factor would be what the load factor fld it would be e which is this thing 24000 divided by the maximum demand is given which is 3000 and multiply with time is 24 why because they are talking about the daily load factor over here so I will just uh, uh, take the calculator with me and this is what this is 24,000 divided by what 3,000 multiply 24 this comes out to be 33 percent this is 0 0.333 or this is 33 percent fine yes so another simple example let's go for another simple one now example 3.14 example 3.14 now what do we have a power station has a daily daily load cycle as under 260 megawatts for six hours 260 megawatts for six hours 200 megawatts for eight hours 160 megawatts for 4 hours and then 100 megawatts for 6 hours so this is the daily load demand if the power station is equipped with 4 sets of 75 megawatts each 4 sets of 75 megawatts each 
calculate the daily load factor the plant capacity factor number one daily load factor number two plant capacity factor i believe we mentioned it with an fc and the third is the daily requirement if the daily requirement of fuel right so the mass of fuel the daily requirement of the fuel if the calorific fuel value of oil or what the calorific value is given it is 10,000 kilocalories per kilogram and the average heat rate of the station work so heat rate is the heat input which is Q and this is given by 2860 2860 kilocalories per kilowatt hours right yes so have a look from here what can you say directly you can say that the maximum demand on the generating station is what is 260 megawatts this you have got something directly from the data now the unit supplied per day you can also have the e total per day so this would be what it would be 260 multiplied with 6 plus 200 multiplied with 8 plus 160 multiplied with 4 plus 100 multiplied with 6 and these are basically in megawatts so i will just put a 10 to the power 3 over here to just write it in kilowatt hours range so the total energy units supplied per day are 4400 into 10 to the power 3 4400 into 10 to the power 3 kilowatt hours now from here you can calculate the load factor the load factor fld is e into divided by maximum demand which is 260 into 10 to the power 3 into time which is 24 because we are asked the daily load factor this comes out to be 70.5 percent 70.5 percent now the next is what the plant capacity factor plant capacity factor so that is basically p divided by install capacity into time the, the the plant capacity factor is the average demand over the plant capacity factor is the average demand p upon the installed capacity into time so the average demand is what the total energy unit divided by total time so the average demand p is e upon time which is what 4400 multiplied 10 to the power 3 divided by 24 this comes out to be what 183.3 kilowatts 183.3 kilowatts so i will write it over here 183.3 and then the install capacity is what so have a look you have four sets of 75 megawatts so the install capacity is four multiply 75 what does this come out to be 300 300 megawatts or if you're writing this also in terms of kilowatts so 300 into 10 to the power 3 kilowatts so 183.3 divided by 300 into 24 this gives you the plant capacity factor which is 61 percent which is 61 percent now the final the third is what so the fuel required per day mass of the fuel is q upon cv mass of the fuel formula we have is what it is q which is the heat rate multiplied with multi divided by cv q upon cv mass of the fuel is q upon cv now the heat rate now the heat required per day is what heat required so this basically is not q directly this is not q directly this is the plant heat rate or what uh heat rate of the station yes this is the heat rate of the station this is what heat rate of the station so from here from this you have to find your q so this q would be what this q is the heat required per day this is basically equal to what this is equal to the plant heat rate plant heat rate multiplied by the energy units so which implies that this q is equal to 2860 multiplied by the number of units are what 4400 into 10 to the power 3 
so this q comes out to be what whatever let's say x so the mass of the fuel required mass of the fuel required you do it what x divided by 10 thousand so this comes out to be one two five eight four into ten to the power three one two five eight point four into ten to the power three kgs it's better to write it in tons so this would be one two five eight point four tons so this is it this is also it do you want me to have one other one or should we just finish it over here should we just finish it over here yes i finish it over here because then it gets longer okay so anyways i will see you in the next video with some more examples i hope <laughs> i hope this was boring enough so and i made this example a little boring do the practice i was not in a practice i just opened the book and i just uh, started solving it so that is why it took a little time if you have practice so it will not take any time see you in the next video where we see some more examples till then take care goodbye